Hey all, welcome back. This is part six, and it's the last part of this nested structures uh, lesson. If you're having trouble with the nested structures, I would take the lessons, uh, in each individual part of the lesson in the nested structures lesson, and go back and try to redo, or at least apply these methods uh, that are contained in the working with arrays and the working with objects to uh, nested structures that you yourself create. Or you could even take the ones that we've created for you, and rather than having them uh, you know, use unshift, or we're about to use the delete operator, um, or get all the keys. Take any of the uh, any of the methods or operators from the arrays and objects section, and see if you can mess around with any of those. The same principles are going to apply. The only thing that would be interchangeable would be, of course, the actual method or operator you're applying. Uh, again, sorry for the formatting here. It's supposed to be all nice and organized. Uh, not organized. Um, what do they call it? Parsed into JavaScript. But for some reason, it's not working, and I'm not really sure why. Um, but with that in mind, we're going to just take it over to uh, Replit, and all will be nice and fancy there. So here's our array. It's got a couple of objects inside of it. I'm going to move this one down, if I can ever find the key, just so it's a little easier to, to read. Uh, so what we're looking for is this one is obviously the mistake. So the first thing that we do is access the object, and we're going to do that by array at zero. Then we're going to access the individual property using the name of the key, which is .cio. So this that I've highlighted on line 5 is the same as this expression here. So once we have that, that's the way that we would delete a property, is by accessing the value, which we've done here on line 15, and then apply the delete operator to it. <clears throat> so if we run this, we'll see that we have now removed that CIO mistake. Excellent. Now we've got another series of lunch orders because... Well, I usually do these around lunchtime. So we got lunch orders. Uh, when we've got an incorrect one that's located inside of the first object. <clears throat> so the index of the object with the arrow on line 14 is going to be 0, because it's this object. It's located at index 0. The key of the property to be removed is this string spec1. So we're going to say delete lunch orders at the index of the object with the arrow, which, again, this... Let's move this over, because this is actually important. Um, not that the other ones aren't important, but the organization of this is very useful to see. So the first part of the expression, lunch orders at index of object with error, is this entire object right here. Then when we say at key of property be removed, that specifies this property individually. So this entire expression is going to be equal to basically line 5. Then when we say delete, it's going to uh, we'll delete that property. So if we run this, Afterwards, we'll see that, um, curious why that looks so weird. Uh, let's see if we can make it, uh, there's really no easy way to see that nice and cleanly. Um, actually, we probably could throw a, a new line symbol here. Let's see what that does. Mm, a little better. But here's the first object, and as you can see, it's removed that spec1 processor speed, and then the second object was unaffected. So, looking good. Now, we are going to complete a function that takes in two parameters, an array, an index, and a key. And that's definitely three parameters, but you get the idea. Um, and I'll change that before you see it. And a key removes the property specified by the input key located within an object located at the given index within the input array. So that's a complicated way of saying we have a property inside of an object inside of an array. Um, located within the object. Uh, input array and returns the input array. Your function should use the delete operator to remove the property specified by the input key located within an object located at the given index within the input array and returns the input array. Below are examples of the code running. Assuming you will have completed the described function, remove a property again. So when we've got our array of objects, copy our stub, got our test case, So remove a property at the given key from the object at the given index. So to remove a property, we use the delete keyword. I'm just going to say, no, we're not just going to say anything. We'll say the whole thing. We have an array of objects. So to get the object in question, we need to say array of objects at index. The array of objects at the index gives us an object that at this point we know has an incorrect key located at our input key here. Or sorry, it has, an, it has an incorrect property located at the input key. So if we have an input key, 
the way to access the value there, or the way to access the property in case you're deleting it, is to say the name of the object, which is the array of objects at index. So if we have an array of objects and we locate an index inside of that array, that value or that expression is going to be the object itself, which we're then going to access at the input key. We then apply the delete operator to the entire expression and it'll get rid of the appropriate property. We're then going to return the array of objects. If we run this, let's see what happens. Array of objects is not defined. Array of objects is not defined. Lies, it is defined. All right, so let's see where we're doing this wrong. Array of objects is not defined. Reference error on line three. So delete array of objects. Yes, definitely spelled it with a lowercase o up here. So we'll make sure that we replace that. Let's go ahead and run it again. Ripple stopping, please wait. Okay, that happens if you hit run too many times in a row. So don't. Um, okay, should log, and it does. Should log key value, first one, second one, third one. Key value, first one, second one, third one. Perfect. So that looks to be adequately correct. Let's go ahead and take it back to the input window. Paste it in. Run the tests. Hmm. I'm actually going to leave this just because uh, this is an error in the tests that doesn't really apply. Uh, we did use the delete operator and it's working correctly. So this is an error in my test. I will fix this before you see it. So when you run this code, it will say everything is correct. Uh, the line we were going to use is our dishes are done, but they're not really because I still have a couple of dishes to go put away, but you don't because you've successfully done this. Uh, so again, keep in mind, this is an introduction. Everything that we've done so far in all of this is uh, an example of how you would access nested structures and all the operators and methods that we've done so far can be applied once you get an expression um, for whatever array or whatever nested object that you're looking for. So again, hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next one.